Hey you guys, welcome to day 30 of our March Madness practice questions. Y'all, we've been pushing through all month long. We have one more day um, of our March Madness practice question series, but I've heard y'all. Y'all have been sticking this thing out with me and um, I've taken the feedback. So we will be continuing this in April. I'm not sure of uh, the name or what I'll do, but we'll definitely keep the daily questions going. I'm here to help. So if y'all are liking it and y'all want to keep participating, I'll keep giving you the questions. But all right, y'all know I like to get into the intro and disclaimer before I get into the questions for today. So for those of you who are familiar with me, hey, y'all. For those of you who are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I am a family nurse practitioner and the founder and CEO of the Nursing Studio. I provide nurses as well as nurse practitioners with tools, resources, courses, videos to assist them on boards as well as in practice. I have been doing this since 2015, assisting nurses as well as nurse practitioners internationally, and I would love to help you too. But you know, I always like to give the disclaimer, there's no absolutes in medicines. You know, we treat on a patient by patient basis. So any questions that I am providing to you, they are based on the guidelines that are currently being tested on boards. If I am teaching on things that we do in practice, I will tell you that so there is no confusion. So with that being said, let's get into question number one for today. All right, question number one states, a patient presents to the office today for follow-up. She continues to have weight gain and noted bradycardia and complains of feeling depressed. The nurse practitioner is reviewing lab results and the TSH is elevated and the T3 and T4 are low. Based on these findings, how should the nurse practitioner diagnose? Is it A, hyperthyroidism, B, Graves' disease, C, hypothyroidism, or D, thyroid storm? Take a moment and tell me what you have in the comments. All right, as always, you know I recommend reading the stem of the question first so that it can slow you down and ensure that you are answering what is it being asked of you. And the key is slowing down so that you can see that you're answering what is being asked, right? So the stem of the question here states, based on these findings, how should the nurse practitioner diagnose? And you know I always tell y'all, assessment, diagnosis, evaluation, treatment. So if we are looking for the diagnosis, we need to see what the assessment findings gave us, right? How did they present? What are their um, signs and symptoms? What are they saying? What are their chief complaints? You know, what are the objective findings? So here, um, the patient comes to the office. They're complaining of continuing to have weight gain, um, uh, bradycardia with a slower heart rate, complaining of feeling depressed. Then the nurse practitioner is looking at lab work. The TSH is elevated. The T3 and T4 are low. So what, what is your, your mind thinking? Of course, instantly you're thinking of thyroidism, right? But hyper versus hypo. So here, the patient is having weight gain. Their heart rate is slow. They're feeling um, depressed. You should start thinking hypothyroidism, right? You know, I always give this scenario, and you can check out the video on hypo. Um, thyroidism versus hyperthyroidism. But with hyperthyroidism, you know, they're having the weight loss, right? As I think like you're hyper. They're running, 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 running. They're, they're hype. They're revved up. Their, um, their heart rate is up because they're racing. They're running, running, running. Their hair is brittle because they've been sweating because they're running, running, running. That's hyper, right? And hypo is the opposite. They're gaining weight. They have no desire to do certain things. They feel depressed. Their heart rate is low and slow, right? Think hypo. So now let, let's look at the labs to see if that actually confirms what we're thinking, our differential that we're thinking, our differential diagnosis, right? So our TSH is elevated. Ding, 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 right? Remember, the TSH is opposite of what the terminology is saying, right? Hypo meaning low, TSH is going to be high, right? Whereas the T3 and T4 go along with the terminology. So the T3 and T4 will be low. So that's what it's saying here. So your best answer is C, hypothyroidism, okay? All right, question number two. A 48-year-old male patient presents to the office today for follow-up. He does not have a past medical history and denies any allergies. Upon exam, the patient's blood pressure is 146 over 96. The nurse practitioner recommended lifestyle modification six months ago and is deciding on the best treatment. 
What will be the best initial treatment? Is it A, amlodipine, B, lisinopril, C, valsartan, or D, chlorothalidone? Take a moment and tell me what you have in the comments. All right, so stem of the question states, what would be the best in initial treatment? All right, so again, you know, we need the stem to slow us down to see what they're even asking, right? So we're looking for treatment, so we need to know the assessment, the diagnosis, so how are they presenting? What are we seeing with these patients? Um, what is the potential diagnosis so that we know what we're treating here, right? And then it also says best initial treatment. So what is that best first line therapy that you're going to give here, right? So this patient is 48, um, doesn't have past medical history, is not allergic to anything, blood pressure is elevated, right? Um, they've tried lifestyle modification six months ago, they're following up, so he needs something, right? Because what, what are the ACC and AHA guidelines for hypertension? That if they do not have comorbidities, we do not want their blood pressure to exceed 140 over 90, right? Because remember, if they have comorbidities, we do not want them to exceed 130 over 90. If they do have comorbidities, we do not want them to exceed 140 over 90. He's exceeding 140 over 90. Lifestyle modifications hasn't worked. And it's time to initiate therapy on a medical basis, right? So then you need to look at any outlying um, things. So... The best thing you should go with is D, chlorothalidone. Chlorothalidone is a thiazide. Best initial treatment. And I, I, I you know, <laughs> if you've been following this and following the videos, I really push hypertension because this is a struggle with a lot of the review students that I work with. That's one of the hangups. And it's, I know it's because it has changed so much, but I, I'm trying to paint a clearer picture for you and give you different questions so that you can uh see it from different perspectives and apply it differently so here in this scenario this patient doesn't have comorbidities you're seeing the range that you need to treat in um and deciding on which to go with first right so when you think of uh, blood pressure treatments and i think this is where the mix-up is because when we say first line therapy you're like but you can use a thiazide a calcium channel blocker an ace arb you're correct so truthfully all of those fall into that first line therapy category. But you know how we do in medicine. You know how nurses do. Everything is right, but what's just that mouse right, right? Like, so it makes it just confusing. Like, oh no, you were right, but you weren't as right as this one, so to speak. You you know, in collects everything. But anyway, so thiazides, calcium channel blockers, ACEs, ARBs, yes, they're all in that category of first line, but you have to know who they're first line for, right? So when we're not looking at our diabetics, our chronic kidney disease, that we are having to really focus in on protecting those kidneys, ACEs and ARBs are who you know run that lane, right? If they're diabetic, chronic kidney disease, you're doing ACE or R, right? To protect the kidneys. Um, African-American patients, they do better with thiazides, uh, calcium channel blockers, right? Still, when you do this, studies show, guidelines show, thiazides have the best response. Thiazides are still in the lead of all of these. So when you're asked on which one out of all the first line therapies to be the initial one to try, textbook is thiazides, okay? Textbook is thiazide. Boards, thiazides. To tell you diabetes, chronic kidney disease, your mind needs to think, all right, I need to protect those. Are you going to go with an ACE or R? You know, it's a patient by patient basis, right? And here are the categories and here are the ones that you can select from. But it didn't um, tell us uh, anything of this patient. This patient doesn't have a uh, medical history. It didn't mention the patient being um, Afri African-American. So they really can tolerate any of the medicines. So when you are just free game to choose any of them, thiazides, okay? I hope that helped you guys. All right. And then number three, 
for today. A patient presents to the office with complaints of abdominal pain. Upon exam, the nurse practitioner notes bruising around the umbilicus area. What sign is the bruising most likely indicative of? Is it A, Murphy sign, B, Cullen sign, C, Soa sign, D, Robsing sign? And after we answer this, I'm going to go a little bit deeper on this question because you could tell that my mind was going deeper. But yeah, let's just do this. That's two questions in one, right? All right, similar question state, what, what sign is this bruising most likely indicative of? So two things here. I'm going to spin it and make this uh, an additional question um, for to one of tomorrow's questions to go a little bit deeper because really I'm asking what what sign is this that we're describing? What is the bruising a sign of? Um, because that can seem a little bit tricky. But again, a patient presents to the office with complaints of abdominal pain. Upon exam, the nurse practitioner notes bruising around the umbilicus area. What sign is the bruising most likely indicative of? And I, I'll just go ahead and answer both here so I'm not confusing the heck out of y'all, right? So bruising around the umbilicus, which sign? Is it A, Murphy sign, B, Cullen sign, C, Soa sign, or D, Rossing sign? B is your answer, Cullen sign. You're like, girl, you, you took the long route to get us here. But <laughs> as I was reading it, I was like, oh, I should have worded that better. But B, Cullen sign, the bruising around the um, umbilicus, you know, and it commonly makes a C, a C shape. So I always think of it as C for Cullen's, right? So that bruising around the umbilicus um, is Cullen sign. We know it's not Murphy sign. You know what Murphy sign, we're palpating under that, that rib area, having them to inhale, and we are assessed for cholecystitis with that. So a sign, you know, having them lying on their left side, uh, raising that right leg to see if there's any abdominal pain. And you know, um, Rob Singh sign, we're palpating on the left, see if there's any uh, pain on the right, right? So that none of these have anything to do with the bruising around the umbilicus other than B, Cullen sign. Now, the way that this question can kind of be uh, interpreted also and why I was saying, uh, I guess that could be a little bit tricky. But when it says, what is it most likely indicative of? What is Cullen sign, a positive Cullen sign indicative of? Tell me in the comments. A little bonus for you. How about that? <laughs> Look, a ramp in the bush, right? <laughs> my mistake or my uh poor clarification in that uh, question gives y'all a bonus so cullen sign what what is a positive cullen sign indicative of and you should say pancreatitis right all right you guys um i hope you found this helpful as always be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share with whomever you may think may find this beneficial as well. But you make sure to meet me back here. We've been pushing through all month long for our March Madness practice questions, and I'm loving that y'all are loving it. And like I said, I've received the feedback, and y'all, I've been doing this a long time, but y'all have really, really enjoyed this, and I appreciate it. So, um, Tomorrow is the last day of our March Madness, but we will keep the questions going. You know, I don't know what it's going to be called. What It'll, it'll still be just like this, but y'all can look forward to continuing the questions. Um, all right. And we'll just keep it going. Y'all stick with me. I'll stick with you guys. So, you know, if y'all want to participate, I'll do it. But if y'all need um, the nursing studio for any other assistance, um, if you need any of our self-paced review courses, uh, for those of you who are enrolled in our five-week intensive, I look forward to working with y'all starting on April the 8th. Enrollment closed on yesterday for that. So we'll be getting started well, about a week out for that. Um, but I look forward to working with you. If you want our review book, ebook, or our paperback, 
um, let us know. It's also a link in my bio. I tried to add some of these things to kind of help you guys out. And then um, one-on-one sessions. One-on-one sessions are, you know, just direct tutoring based off of, you could do it in various tiers. If you're looking to change your weaknesses to your strength on a specific area, um, that's an option. If you're just trying to run through, that's an option. If you're trying to just gauge your readiness, that's an option to uh, be tested as far as like a pretest and a analysis with feedback. That's an option. And then there's also our custom package, which is the most common one that, you know, has the assessment to see where you are. That works to bring you from unsuccessful to successful, gauging where your weaknesses are and formulating a study plan and package to help you get on the right track and working alongside with you for success. So I know that's a lot, but I want to throw that out there. But just reach out to us at the Nursing Studio 803 Four hundred six eight six four, or shoot us an email at the nursing studio the number one at gmail.com i look forward to working with you guys as always happy studying bye y'all